like the many motions we've seen them file. Just like the many motions. I mean, this idea that there's worse publicity in Manhattan than there is anybody anywhere else, you know, really doesn't doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, it's the 21st so, right. century. Like, they're going to find you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was the argument they were making. But it does strike me, just to, to stay on this for a second, again, I always ask this question, like, normal, not normal. This flurry of attempts to delay the trial, to get the venue moved, all this stuff we've seen over the last week, like, that's not standard practice, right? No, I mean, look, there are pretrial motions to move venue. I've seen those. I've yeah. dealt with those. But the fact that they keep coming every time you get shot down, you just keep saying reconsider, head it up to the next court, like, that's not normal. And that relates to the question I want to ask you, Olivia, as someone who's covered uh, tr Trump for a while now. You know, there are people in his circle who will say sometimes anonymously and sometimes named reporters as sort of like, bring it on, like he's going to look like a martyr and it'll be right. good for our fundraising. And just everything seems like they, he really doesn't want to be there, he doesn't want this to happen. He clearly does not want to be there. I mean, when he walked in the room today, I've seen him in a lot of different settings. I've seen him in the White House, in Trump Tower, Mar-a-Lago, campaign trail, you name it. I've spent a lot of time with this man. And I was really not prepared for the sight of him in that courtroom today. It's this very drab space with this terrible lighting. And it's all kind of neutrals. And yep. then he comes in in this in technicolor orange and with the golden hair and this kind of high blue suit. And he looks, I don't know, it's like a poppy flower or something in a desert. And uh, he it's so strange to see him in that context, but no power. He kind of sprung up at the end of this hearing after his lawyers just being completely reprimanded by the judge uh, for these delay attempts. And he sprung up when it was over and the judge promptly looked at him and said, sir, could you please sit back down? He didn't call him Mr. President. There was no, you know, it was not overly polite. And he had to, you know, sink back into the seat. He has no power in there. I mean, that really is. And, and, the, and the again, the sort of physical bearing of him. And again, like, this is all, this is the, we can't, this is the nominee for one of the two major parties. Like, <laughs> it's like it's so wild to keep reminding yourself that totally. because it doesn't, but if it were anyone else, it'd be like, wow, the slump shoulders, the, yeah. the, the, the clear exhaustion on his face. Like, yeah. he looks very defeated by the end of the day. I thought initially, I thought, oh, he's performing being very bored, right? Who could be bored and fall asleep at their own criminal trial? I mean, it seemed absurd to me. And then seeing him in there today on the way out, you could just see how exhausted he was. He was sort of hobbling and looked like he'd just gotten off of a long haul flight or something. And I just thought, how is he going to do this for the duration of this trial? I, I want to say that he today uh, he complained about the pot trial being both too fast and too long. <laughs> uh, he, he, so, so he said that Judge Mershon is, Mershon is railroading me at breakneck speed in order to completely satisfy his friends. Uh, additionally, he has gagged me so I cannot talk. I, this goes on forever and ever. You can look it up and read it if you want to. Um, he also posted, this trial is a long rigged endurance contest dealing with nasty, crooky p people who want to destroy our country, MAGA 2024. On the pacing, it does seem like this week's jury selection happened quite expeditiously. Well, when you got through each group of 96, at least 50 each time we're saying we're out of this. We can't be fair and impartial. We don't want to sit. And so they were out. And then you took these groups of 18. And once you got through the 42 questions that each of them have to be asked, that's tedious. That takes some time. But then once you got through that, which would be a few hours, the strikes themselves happened pretty quickly. So I, the fact that this has moved moved along, I think it has made a lot of sense. It is pretty consistent with what you would see in a high profile jury case. What do you think it will mean for Trump world to have him there every day for the next four weeks? I Just logistically, he's running for president. And I, we talked about this the other night, but the campaign and the court are sharing custody of him. He is, you know, it, his Wednesdays are free. His weekends are free, maybe on Wednesdays. And, uh, you know, he's been planning rallies. I noticed in the tri-state area, he has one in Wildwood, New Jersey on May 11th. So they are preparing for the strange logistics of this. But I have to imagine he's also going to be very tired on days when he does not have court. And how much stamina does he really have? I don't know. I mean, again, just to, 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 to reset the facts here, the man is 77 years old. He'll turn 78 by the time of the election. And there's been so much talk about Joe Biden's age. I mean, He's he's a 77 year old man sitting in courthouse acute like facing criminal charges for the first time in his life. These are less than ideal conditions to do anything. And he loves a busy schedule. He likes going to rallies, but he needs to feed off of a crowd yes. of people who love him. He needs attention. He absorbs that. He comes out more energetic. This is not that. This is the right? opposite this of it. I mean, this is just like a pure energy sink. Yeah.
President Trump lashing out after learning that opening arguments in his criminal hush money trial will, in fact, begin Monday morning. All 12 jurors and six alternates have been chosen by the attorneys. What's happening here with the judicial system is an outrage. And all over the world, they're watching it. And all over the world, they're saying it. This is a giant witch hunt. A familiar refrain from the former president, who is also claiming baselessly that the judge is speeding up the timeline for this trial to begin. CNN's Jeremy Herb has been covering this since day one in court again today. Um, what did you notice most today, Jeremy, about his behavior, his demeanor? Yeah, Erica, you know, what's interesting is seeing there's sort of two Trumps when he's in trial. At times, he's sort of aloof, uninterested. He's leaning back in his chair, his eyes maybe closing from time to time. Other times, he is very attentive and very into what is happening and what's going on, particularly when some of the jurors are being asked questions about him, their opinions about him. He is watching them. He's studying them. He's listening to their answers. Um, he's also particularly interested when they're talking about some of the stuff that annoys him with this case. And that happens, you know, that happens quite a bit, not surprisingly. We had a hearing this afternoon where prosecutors are going through all of the other cases they want to bring up, the civil fraud verdict against him, the E. Jean Carroll defamation verdicts that have gone against him. And when one of the prosecutors raised that verdict, Trump shook his head and was glaring at the prosecutor. Um, one other interesting thing, just seeing that this afternoon, at the end of the day, Trump, he went to get up. He thought the hearing was done, and we thought it was, too. It was, trying to, it was wrapping up. But as Trump stood up, the judge turned to him and quickly said, sir, sit down, please sit down. Um, it was just, it was another reminder, Erica, of, you know, Trump is not in control of his own movements there. And he, he listened to the judge as told, but this is certainly, it's something that we will continue to watch going forward. Yeah, not a role that he's perhaps uh, used to. Jeremy, stay with me. I also want to bring in with us Jane Rosenberg, who's one of the sketch artists for this trial. Jane, you were also in court today. Uh, you've, been, you've been doing this since the 80s. Uh, you're doing a lot of Trump coverage these days. All Trump all the time. All Trump all the time. Jeremy was talking about the various moods that he saw. What, what do you notice? Because you really need to hone in on the details of all of these people there to bring us inside the courtroom. There are no cameras, so we're grateful that you're there. What really stood out to you? I was glad I heard his report because <laughs> today I was seated behind his head and I, I didn't get a good look at his facial expressions. Mm -hmm. But yesterday and the day before, I was, I was a front view. And exactly the way he described him. He was, today he was very attentive. I noticed he was turned really looking at, at the jurors who were being interviewed. Very interested. But I, I also have seen him on other days falling asleep. Mm -hmm. and like he couldn't keep his eyes open. But today he was really paying attention to the jurors. So your view then, that gave you more of a view of the jurors? Today? Today, I'm in the... Uh, yes. And so what was... The, what did you notice from the jurors? Because it was a fairly emotional day. There were a couple of different moments where it got fairly emotional. People raised concerns about their anxiety, about perhaps being outed as a juror. Yes. It, they're anonymous, and, and it's, it's a little risky to be outed as a juror in the Trump trial. And even as a courtroom artist, I, I get, I get mail, emails from his base you have to watch out. So and I know the judge is probably being protected. Mm -hmm. People, anybody involved will have, have to watch it. So. Does that concern you? You mentioned you've gotten emails. Have, have you ever felt threatened? I, no, they say nasty things to me. I haven't been threatened with my life, actually. But mm -hmm. I once responded, and I won't do that ever again. Yeah, I guess that's a lesson you learned. <laughs> yes. Probably a lesson that. That, you were, that you learned yeah. pretty quickly. Um, Jeremy, as we look at the things, as we look at how things were playing out rather in court today, you're talking about the, the end of the day there where Donald Trump, of course, was, uh, was told to sit down and did listen, as you point out. As we are moving into Monday, too, there are a lot of questions about what that will look like. Donald Trump saying again that he does plan to testify. What is the sense and what, what are you seeing from the attorneys as they are working with him throughout the time when they're questioning some of these potential jurors? He's leaning in. How engaged is he? He's certainly engaged. And, you know, he speaks a lot with his lawyer, Todd Blanche, and his other lawyers. Um, you know, he's... Uh He's certainly into these trials, and we watched him. I, I watched him also in the fall during the civil fraud trial. That was a 
a lot of times a boring trial about accounting, but when witnesses like Michael Cohen came, he was incredibly engaged. And I think what we're going to see now going forward with opening statements, there's going to be a lot of Michael Cohen's, including Michael Cohen himself. We're going to have Stormy Daniels testify and Hope Hicks testify. And I think Trump is certainly going to both be engaged with what's happening, but also he's going to have to help himself not to react. Remember back earlier in this week, the judge reprimanded Trump for turning to the juror and muttering while the juror was speaking. And Trump is really going to have to watch himself as the judge has already put him on notice. And we're going to have a hearing, of course, on Tuesday about the violating of the gag order. So mm -hmm. the former president, you know, he's certainly going to be engaged here, but he's, he's also going to have to be careful with. So you could see it. Donald Trump's nightmare is coming true faster than we thought, harder than we thought. You know, it's just it's 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 engrossing. It's it's actually like it, it's like you, you can't help but watch this disaster unfold for him because all of this is showing that the system is chugging along. There's still rightful criticisms to make that if there was anybody else but Trump won, these trials would have already happened. Right. I think he would have been convicted probably in all four cases and at least two or three of the trials might have happened by now if he was just some regular guy, right? Let's be clear. Or even like a member of Congress. Like even if he was just like some random member of Congress, not even like a regular American, but somebody who was a big deal, but not a former loser ex-president. But it's also the case that you, you can see the jury is smacking back at him. The jury is slapping him in the face. The jury is yelling at him and screaming at him saying, you will not intimidate us. They don't need to scream and yell with their words. They do it in their silence. Because what do we see on the first couple days? We saw a juror, and I have no ill will for them, him or her. We don't know. We really we don't know who they are. I have no ill will for them for saying, I, I can't do this. I've already, my identity could be exposed, blah, 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 blah. But what the rest of the jury has said tonight, and the judge said tonight, is sit down and shut up, Donald. We may find you innocent. We may find you not guilty. But... We're going to find you something and it's going to be our decision based on the facts and not your decision based on your bullying. 